Hi, everyone. I'm Sandra Ingerman, and welcome to the Shaman's Cave, where we're uh, answering your call today of uh, how to find out who your power animals are. That's great. Uh, I was just, I was feeling a little guilty here. I'm Renee Barabo, and known as the Practical Shaman, because I am kind of practical. Uh, but my cat's locked up in the bedroom. <laughs> Because she's just been vocal lately, really vocal lately, and I don't, I don't speak cat. Somebody out there speak cat. I don't know what she's going on about. You speak cat? I do definitely speak cat. <laughs> oh, well, maybe you could talk to her because she's yeah. like going on and on lately a lot. And, you know, one time I said to a friend, oh, what is she? She just goes on and on. And she goes, Renee, why is it such a bad thing that your cat's talking to you? all the time and I'm like, because I like it quiet. <laughs> I'm such a beast. <laughs> speaking of speaking of animals, I am a beast. Uh, I'll say it right here. You all heard it. Now we can move on to our power animals. And I will say this, when I first started doing, uh, many years ago, I was working with uh, somebody who practices Saccharin homeopathy. And the first few remedies were all animals. The first one was bear's milk, lion's milk, tiger's milk. I was so excited when I finally moved off the animals into, but I can't still get to the metal scale. So I don't know, maybe I'll try it with my new Healy device, Sonner, and see if I can get into the homeopathy metals, but I don't know. So, so animals and I tend to have this very symbiotic relationship. Like I learned most of my my, my coping behaviors from the wild animals. <laughs> uh -huh. Is that funny? It is funny. I know. Absolutely. But but actually, the point that you bring up is um, is perfect in this discussion, because in today's world, because we're so disconnected from uh, the animal kingdom, you know, we see them on TV and see them in zoos, but you know, we're, we're real disconnected. And in, um, so when you teach people how to journey today, they find animals from all over the world. Um, but in shamanic cultures, they, they more work like you did, Renee, is that um, the animal that typically was your power animal or spirit animal or guardian spirit, there are different uh, terms for it, was an animal that you needed a connection with, a strong connection with. Um, and so that makes perfect sense. <laughs> Does it? That's interesting because, you know, the very first cat I had when I was seven and it was it was a little rough growing up then. My mom had a full-time job and, you know, it was back when men didn't pay child support and, you know, didn't look back at it. And I had this cat and her name was Daisy. I'd get two houses up and she would start whacking me, you know, like, cause I was, you know, back then five, six, seven, you could walk to school yourself. Now a parent probably wouldn't let you walk next door by yourself, but the, you know, and the cat would, you know, get me all the time. And I come home one day and told my mom, I gave the cat away. She goes, you what? I said, yeah, I gave the cat away. She kept scratching me when I was trying to go to school in the morning. <laughs> so I've always had a very special relationship with cats. In fact, when I moved to California, I had this um, calico cat and her name was Dash. Cause when I first got her, she got right on the dashboard and she became Dash immediately. And one day, a few times in my life, and Sandra, I don't know how many times you've had in your life where you get that booming voice that you can't ignore. And it said, Dash needs to go so you can grow spiritually. And I'm there like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked at the cat underneath the table and it was the last time I saw the cat. And it was like Thanksgiving many years ago. And, and she went that day. And it was it was my biggest spiritual transformation ever because this cat taught me how to love. One night when I was in one of those dark nights of the soul that we talked about last week, the cat fetched bottle caps. Mm. One night I would toss a bottle cap. She'd bring it back to me. 
And it was one of those, you know, what's, it was one of those nights where I was on my bed, what's the use, why am I doing this? I mean, some melodramatic moment in my life, I'm sure, but, but she knew, she never did it again, never did it before. That mm-hmm. night she brought me back the bottle caps time and time again until I got from this place of what is this for and what am I doing here to, wow, that's pretty cool. The cat's catching the bottle caps. <laughs> and, 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 you know, so that I am, I'm practical. I need a, like a practical example of this. You know, this cat picked me. She hopped into the cat carrier. What cat hops into the cat carrier? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing in shamanism is that um, it's believed that these animals pick you um, because they have a particular lesson um, to give you. And I know people are going to say, oh, no, we can't hear Sandra's rant again, please. <laughs> but, oh, we can hear. Oh, we but, can, we're always good for a Sandra rant. But, but there are new people on the show. So <laughs> I got I to gotta get the new people. <laughs> but the thing that people are doing wrong in shamanism today, and although we say you can't do anything wrong in shamanism, as long as you're not creating harm, that's the only thing you can do wrong is as soon as you meet these animals that volunteered, literally volunteered themselves to you, instead of you talking to them, embracing them, thanking them, doing anything, you immediately come back and look up in some author's book what that animal means. And so you just disconnected from the blessing and the gift that this animal came to you with because you read somebody else's book with the blessing that that animal brought to them, but you're not them, you're you and you're unique. And the spirits pick you for a very unique reason. So it's another example of in the West where we just don't wanna own our power, you know, because it doesn't take that much to turn to an animal that's volunteering itself to you and saying, what gift, what teaching, what blessing are you bringing into my life? (laughs) It reminds me of the story when I went once on one of my earlier journeys for somebody and I saw him in the cage with this, you know, like a big cat. And I thought like, well, I can't even tell him this, you know, like, what, you know, what do I know? And turns out he had, you know, worked in a zoo and he had, you know, he had to sedate one of this animal that I saw. And I didn't even trust the information I got for him at the time. I was like, oh, how am I going to tell somebody this? You know, I mean, so the thing is, is, and I see that a lot on our, our, our feed over at the Shaman's Cave is that people are always wanting to know, what does this mean? And they're looking at other people to tell them, what does it mean? Well, what does it mean for you? I mean, the day that my cat left and I had to grow spiritually, I knew what that meant for me. And, and luckily I, I learned that lesson, but there, you know, in one year I painted 10 large canvases of bears, mm. you know, and because the bear was with me and, and it was like the bear reading the ruins, the bear doing this, it was, they're very fun. And, and it was, I was in an art camp up in, it wasn't an art camp, I called it art camp because I like to have fun. I went away to paint for a month and the, the, uh, the famous painter comes through and he said, walks into my studio and says, what's with all the bears? And I looked at him and I said, well, when I took my, my little you know, painting to the art gallery, she said, well, you need 10 in the same series. And I thought she meant I needed 10 bears. And so I painted 10 bears so that, you know, I was trying to get approved at the art gallery. And he goes, all your paintings are in the same style. You don't need to, you can get off the bears now. So that's when I moved to the tigers and the, you know, and actually painted a picture of myself with, in front of this house with, that I remembered, I looked it up on Zillow, painted a picture of the house with me and the cat in front of it. Mm. And the cat was big as, in this painting is as big as me. So that's kind of an interesting way to work with an animal that you sometimes that your relationship to is to draw it or paint it or to right. be with it. Mm-hmm. See what it's teaching you. 
Absolutely, yeah. And the other thing too is um, I tell people who get really, really stuck on their um, interpretations about anything, journeys or uh, omens or animals is, you know, take some time to reflect. You know, we want everything, we want fast food. And the spirits actually don't, they slow us down sometimes. And the reason a lot of times people run to look up in books is the spirits want you to take some time to sit and reflect in silence. And so they're not talking to you because you're not ready to be talked to yet. They're trying to wait till you're prepared. And so, you know, nice ways to reflect, nice ways to prepare, is go into nature and, you know, sit in a place where you can look out and you know how you let your mind drift and all of a sudden you get this download of, oh, that's what that meant. Um, or you're staring at a, a river flowing and you're, you're, you're being hypnotized by the song of the river and you get a download. So nature is great for that because it, it's, it's a great place for reflection. And also I tell people to journal um, and do some automatic writing where um, you write down, what does this mean? What did this cat's actions mean? What, you know, whatever your question is. And then you can put some music on and you can kind of close your eyes and just let your hand go. And uh, when the music is over, and when you open up your eyes, you won't believe the wisdom that comes out. <laughs> I actually taught, um, I used to teach Tarot doing that uh, through automatic writing. Um, I'd have people do automatic writing to the Tarot cards and say, what is the meaning of this card? Close your eyes and you open up your eyes and you can't believe what's on the page. I mean, you can't believe it. Did this actually come out of you? But it comes out of that, that, that deep well of knowledge. And so that's a great place. That's a great way to interpret where, when you're stuck. Hmm. It, I don't know. So a lot of times when we're talking, these old memories will come out. Like I just remembered about many years ago, I did a past life regression and I went into, I accidentally, I don't know where I was, but I accidentally went into a bear's den and you know and it was dismembered by a bear essentially and it wasn't it was kind of this cathartic moment because i was in the wrong place at the wrong time it wasn't the bear you know the bear it was just doing what the bear did you know with this big claws and it was really an interesting dismemberment but i don't know where that just came from why out of the blue so sometimes you, you these animals are, are with you for a very long long time and it was after that, you know, that I, I worked with that bear energy and, and really looking at, you know, where you, when, where are you at the wrong time at the wrong place or the right place, at the, you know, and, and, and that, but I, I don't know where that's going, but that was just one way that that bear came up many times. And yeah. then I, when I was going on my Hembleche, the, the elder who was taking me up to the mountain says, hey, so Renee, have you ever seen a bear? And so like, you know, who put somebody up on the mountain for three days and three nights when you're like thinking, okay, does he know something I don't know? And he did, but the bear didn't come that time. The bear came maybe a couple of years later. I was somewhere else and all of a sudden I was face to face with a bear again. And it was like all of those other experiences prepared me for that one moment where I said, well, thank you for showing up. <laughs> it's okay, you can go now. <laughs> and I went back to the despacho I was making. And, you know, the bear and I had a very peaceful encounter, but I did finally got face to face with that bear. Wow. Yeah, it's, it is amazing. I, I came back to back with a bear. <laughs> and that, uh -oh. that, that worked out a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. So did you want to take us on a little journey to meet our power animal or what? Yeah. I didn't, we didn't even talk about who was going to do that, but. Well, I can do that. I'm sure you've done it a couple of times, right? 
Just a couple. Yeah, this is a really good time to um, uh, start to make those spiritual connections because um, they they help to bring you back to place a center, you know, because we're so run by our little minds and our egos and we're just really caught up in fear and anger right now and half of it we don't even know <laughs> why we're <laughs> half of it's not even ours i know half of it's not even ours which is what i'm picking up on sammy too so, oh it has nothing to do okay yeah you mentioned that earlier sammy's picking up on some other things so hmm. okay so um, shamans see with their hearts. They don't see with their eyes. And typically shamans are very active when they journey. So they dance, they sing, they drum, uh, rattle actually while they're journeying. And I'm using what's called an eye curtain. So I can kind of see, but I can keep my eyes closed at the same time. Because if you have too much light coming in, um, it's really, really difficult um, to be able to focus on your journeys. And so um, close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. There are different worlds in shamanism, but we don't have time to go into all these worlds. And so I'm just gonna bring you to a place in nature where you're going to ask to meet up with a helping spirit and I will guide you in this. So take a few deep, really deep breaths. Think about how much you love this planet Earth. Love is always the doorway into the unseen realms. So as you focus on your heart and what you love about the earth, stand up. Imagine yourself standing up as we're taking a journey from the seen to the unseen realms. Walk towards the door of your apartment or your house and notice how it starts to turn into energy. And that doorway becomes a mist or a fog that you just have to step through. And now you find yourself on a beautiful path in nature, walking to either your favorite park or your favorite hiking place. The beauty of a shamanic journey is that you move outside of time. So you can travel a hundred miles or more in the distance in just a moment's time. Because the drum is the horse that takes the shaman on his or her journey. And the drum will carry you to this beautiful place in nature where the first thing you do is you open up your non-ordinary reality senses. Your invisible ears. What do you hear beyond the normal sounds? 
you open your invisible eyes. What do you see behind your normal images? And you take a deep breath in and fill your lungs with the fragrance of the beauty of the unseen realms. And you have a different sense of feeling in your body. It's like you can feel your own bones. You can feel yourself, your feelings, your vibration, your energy. And now that your non-ordinary reality senses are open, for we use all of our senses in a journey, put out a call to meet up with a power animal or what we call also a guardian spirit. So if you get an elf or a rose or a tree, those would be a guardian spirit versus a spirit animal. Notice who comes to greet you, who volunteers itself. and say, may I step into your field of energy? And introduce yourself to this amazing spirit from the transcendent realms who volunteers to give you guidance and healing and to bring comfort into your life. And ask this being who volunteered itself, does it have a message for you? Does it have a teaching for you about why it's come to you at this particular time? Feel the texture of this being. Listen to its messages. They might be telepathic. Open up your invisible ears. Notice if they're showing you a vision, what is that vision? And thank this animal or nature being for volunteering itself to you and tell it that you will return to see it again. But now it's time to return. So we say goodbye for now and we turn around and we retrace our steps back down the beautiful path of nature, back to our ordinary realm of existence, but feeling a little bit lighter, a little more filled with hope, a little bit more filled with bliss, a little bit more filled with inner strength because now you have a helping spirit who has your back and loves you. So come back into the room that you're journeying in. Feel your feet planted on the floor. Imagine deep roots going down into the earth.
Open your eyes. And your back. Okay, so we all want to come back from that journey. Well, that was fun and unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you always get something unexpected. <laughs> all right. Well, it was so unexpected. As soon as you started, all of a sudden, you know, and I don't know if because we were talking about some other things earlier, but all of a sudden, I was covered with this leather wrist thing. And I thought it was a falcon that landed on my arm, but it seemed to be an e you know, like an eagle. It was a big bird. But then when we got to where we were going, because it kind of dragged me along to where we were going. And then it dropped me in the arms of a baboon for a minute. But then when we got to really where we were going, you know, over back in ancient Egypt where you have the half bird and half human? Oh yeah. That's what showed up. Oh wow. I don't know what that means and I'm not gonna look it up in a book. Although I was, you know, I, I thought, wow, that's an interesting, interesting thing yeah was it the god anubis how, how, what is how do you spell that uh anubis a-n-u-b-i-s huh i don't know yeah they're... i didn't ask because i was like i was busy trying to analyze it in my mind but then i was given a scroll uh-huh and when i was leaving i was going and it was like no, no, take the scroll with you. You're going to need it. It's your new map. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I got a new a new treasure map. Yeah. I think. That's great. <laughs> That's great. See, now Renee, she uh she got a real visual. Um I do get visuals cuz you know, I've been journeying for a long time, but I'm more clear audience. I, I hear, so um, I really depend on, I've been working with the same um, helping spirit for uh, 40 years. I met him on Halloween of 1980 and he does all my healing work for me and, and he uh, answers my questions for me. And um, so uh, I hear, he, I, I really depend on his, um, his speaking to me. And he will also oftentimes have me rehearse uh, words before I speak to a client because he wants the words to be power words of healing. Hmm. And he wants to make sure I get them right. <laughs> so <laughs> most of my journey is rehearsing words for my clients. That's most of what my journeys are. So uh, I bring that point up because people have different ways of accessing information. So don't close yourself off to there only being one way. We have, um, we have all these senses. Traditional shamans use all their senses, but most of us in the modern day world where we've been so cut off from our senses, we can usually activate uh, one or two at a time. <laughs> when I get the word, when I hear, it's like, because I'm not paying attention. You know, like the big things, like the cat's gotta go. Uh, and you know, I get those every once in a while. And, and sometimes the wind will speak to me that way, like, it's because I'm not paying attention. Um, and, but you know, I mean, sometimes I'll see things, but for years it didn't see anything. I was like, these people, they get these great visions and I'm not getting anything, you know, but things were happening. So trust it. And for those of you, uh, Saunders' new class is starting in a week. So if you haven't already listened to the replay, then make sure there, there's links on our website here, shamanstv.com, where you can get the replay and listen. And if you're encouraged to go, into a sounds like a journey abyss the way you described it before of the dark night and 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 go without the map or you'll have sandra's map and 
ISIS from what I understand, but her yeah. class is coming up. You want to say a couple words about that or? Yeah, well, we're, we're going on a quest. We're going on an odyssey to let go. We're, we're going down to the place of dark silence to be able to meet with our true self um, and let go of our old self so that we can meet the new normal that's coming in. And I will say that one of the bonuses for the class, I put together an entire package on shamanic journeying. So there's a 90 minute lecture on how to journey. There's uh, 18 pages of every question any student has asked me about journeying in, in 40 <laughs> years. And then there are three tracks uh, where I lead you on a journey to the lower world to meet a power animal, the middle world to meet a nature spirit and the upper world to meet a teacher. So that all comes free. It's an entire course in itself on shamanic journeying, and that comes free with the dark night of the soul. Um, so you get two courses in one. <laughs> Looks like I went to all three places with today's journey. And also, I will be doing a one day healing, uh, two, actually, it's a two hour how to whistle up a wind for healing. And mm -hmm. that kind of came to me because I needed some healing. And I thought, well, why don't I go with, whistle up a wind for this healing? And it literally shifted me from a place where I was stuck in fear to I uh, gave, res resigned from a job the very next day. Now, I'm not telling you all you're going to come get here and you're going to resign from your job, so don't get in fear. But actually to remember to use the tools that we do have in order to find personal healing and personal um, become back in alignment with ourselves personally. So that's August 15th. Wow. Yeah, it just, it came out and I'm there like, I think I should teach us, so. Yeah, that one, I, I know I say this, I missed, the thing is, is Renee does these really wonderful classes. I've been dying to do her win not class and it just hasn't been at a time when I can do it. And now I'm going to try and do the, this one. She, she's really offering amazing resources for all of us, everybody. And um, I'm just really grateful. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. I enjoy our time together. And so all of the right things that you can do is share this, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. And we're getting up towards 7,000 followers on our YouTube channel. And our Facebook page, The Shaman's Cave, is growing exponentially and please try to keep your comments to shamanism and, and those about i mean this all, all this other work is great but we're we're the shaman's cave so that's what we would like all right and sandra any last parting words well um i've been off uh the shaman's cave facebook page for a little bit but i'll be going back on soon i'll be going back on in august and um I just uh, wish that all of you stay safe and stay in your light and, and stick to your shamanic practices. Um, don't tread surface waves. Uh, work as deeply as you can and you'll get the rewards. So thank you for joining us, everyone. And blessings and blessings, Renee. Blessings.